Hey guys, welcome to Overland and Z. You join me in my absolute favorite place in New Zealand, Nevis Valley. We just come up from Garston, heading on into the valley over there. And um, for all the places we've been in New Zealand, this is probably my favorite drive I've ever done. So I'm super keen to bring you guys along and hopefully inspire you to get out here and head through the valley next time you're down here. Thanks to our patrons for help making this possible. Learn more in the description below. Favorite place in New Zealand, it's pretty cool, I know. We came through here three years ago, two years ago, and of all the tracks that we did in our three week 7,000k journey, Nevis Valley was my absolute favorite. It's not particularly challenging or anything, it's just an absolutely stunning place, and the, the history and the fact that people you know, lived out here and stuff, which will stop off at the towns on the way through, and see some of the gold mining history and stuff. Yeah, I don't know what it was about this place. It just, I think it's the distance, the remoteness, and just the vastness of it. Like, it's huge. This track's real long. It takes probably all day to get through, assuming you're stopping and enjoying it. And yeah. Pretty much time. Whoa! My love of ATs. A little bit of a disadvantage. Not another person in sight. It's deathly silent out here. Calm winds blowing through. Nevis Valley, man. It's incredible. And it's so cool to be back here. Especially given that I missed out on it last year when I was down doing South Island solo and I was meant to be coming through here. Obviously I didn't make that. bits here. My range just in case. I've had a feel around with the stick and they feel okay. Hoping as I can stop in the middle of each one and have a break. Oh that was deep. Alright my mind on this third one. I can't find a stick long enough to poke it in there and see how deep it actually is. I'm gonna take the side path that everyone else seems to be using today. There's no water at either end of this long one so I'm gonna take that as a sign. one of the deepest and possibly longest water crossings in the whole of Nevis Valley. Just be aware that it's real bumpy so don't hit it with too much speed. With most of the four-wheel drive challenges out of the way, it's time to make a move up to the little town.
said, when you're heading south to Norfolk, I am. The first little town that kind of dives into the history of this area is maybe halfway in, and we're heading north now. And this one looks a little bit more used than the original Nevis Township, which is somewhere in the distance. But there's still heaps of history here of like the gold tailings and I, I guess the reason that all these towns and this area exist in the first place. It must have been super, super harsh out here in the winter and um, I'll jump into that a little bit more once we're in the next town as there's a bit more history there and a bit more stuff to see. But I love this town, like you can stand up on the hills here and just look out over the valley and it is incredible. Such a big expanse of not really nothing, but just a big expanse of like a road, the hills, the animals. It's cool. It's very cool. I know I keep saying that, like, I know I keep going, oh, I'm not about how pretty it is, but it really is. This whole area is just amazing. Now, I do these trips basically to fill a passion of photography. You know, Forward driving is not my primary reason for coming out and doing these, so coming to these places that don't necessarily have to be a hard full drive challenge, but places that are visually stunning always gets me excited. You know, there's something special about these big otago skies and plains that we just don't get in the north island like, i love the north island it's cool but it's nothing compared to this This river crossing marks the end of the four-wheel drive section of Nevis Valley. Now it's time to head up into the old school town. Basically in the old Nevis township now. You can see like rocks and stuff out there. Possibly the old buildings. There is more further up that we can stop off at two seconds. But it's kind of weird just having like a street. Yeah, this was never paved or anything, and um, I don't know, it's pretty cool. There's like, signs and everything. It's amazing how much of this town is still left. Standing in the old pub. Wow, what's left of it? It's pretty crazy what's happened over the years. There's still evidence of like the fireplace and all that, and you know, thankfully not all of it has disappeared because unfortunately people do like to steal these things. Imagine living here though. Snow, yay deep, half the year round, freezing cold, middle of nowhere, especially back in the old days when horse and cart was your way in. And I assume it would not have been this quiet either. It would have been the sound of gold mining machinery and these days though, it's peaceful. And um, it's just cool to come back and see the history of Otago. It's cool. 
Maybe just see the snow on the hills up there. Winter is on its way, sadly. And there's the hot locks. Goodbye, Nevis Valley. You were epic. to wrap up this episode outside. It is blowing an absolute gale though. No just fair, we're pretty high up. But yeah, Duff is saddled. Nevis Road, highest public road in New Zealand. Road being the keyword there. There are obviously four drive tracks that can get up higher. The views up here though are pretty stunning. Anyway, it's been a long day. I need to make a move back to our accommodation for the night. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this. It helps promote these videos to people who may also enjoy them. And if you haven't, please subscribe. It means a lot to us. If you want all the behind the scenes stuff and early access to whatever's going on with Overland and Z, check out our Patreon page. And if you want, make a pledge. Every little bit helps us get out here and make more of these videos on these trips. Anyway, till next time, catch you later on Overland and Z.